The last two episodes have been about games that I don't particularly like, which can be entertaining and all, but it gets old quickly. So today, I want to talk about something awesome. Not any game in particular, but this time, game music. Specifically, the two new studio albums by Gameadelic since reforming. Reboot, with three O's, and Rebirth. Who or what is Gameadelic, you ask? Good question. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, which people with any kind of functioning brain call the golden era of gaming, a lot of the major arcade developers had their own bands that would play arranged versions of their game's music on real instruments, which would often accompany soundtrack CDs. Sega had SST, which stands for Supersonic Team, Capcom had Alf Lyra, Taito had Zuntada, Konami had Kukeha Club, SNK had the Shinsekai Gakkyoku Zatsugidan, and Data East's band was Game Adelic. The only developer with a band that didn't primarily make arcade games was Falcom, whose band was called JDK. To be honest, before I got into arcade soundtracks, I didn't really like high-quality arranged versions of game music. The low-fidelity sounds of the NES and the Genesis were part of what made me enjoy that music so much. But arcade soundtrack CDs will usually have one or two arranged versions along with the original songs, so I would hear them from time to time. I can confidently say the group that changed my mind about arranges was Gameadelic. Their songs were straight up, pure old school hard rock. The arranged versions of Vapor Trail, Thunder Zone, Wolf Fang, and almost everything else were full of badass guitar riffs that I couldn't listen to without rocking out. Clearly, this band was made up of old school rock and rollers. One really important thing about their sound that made them stand out was that Although there were keyboard parts in the songs, they never let the synth drown out the guitars, so it didn't have that wimpy, overproduced J-Rock sound. Gameadelic would generally do one band arrangement from each of Data East's more prominent titles that were popular enough to get soundtrack CDs, so their catalog is relatively sparse compared to maybe Sega or SNK's bands. They did actually put out a couple compilation CDs before that brought a lot of their tracks together into one disc, but neither of them were comprehensive. So I ended up getting all of the CDs, picking their songs off, and making my own CDR for my personal use. With Nady East having gone bankrupt so many years ago, I figured this would be all the game Adelic music that would ever exist. Skip ahead to the year 2012. One of the original members from Sega's band, Namiki Koichi had somehow managed to reform the group and was planning a game music tribute concert in summer 2013. Apparently, he asked the bassist from Game Adelic if they would get back together to perform at the concert as well. By some miracle, nearly all of the original members were willing to do it, and Game Adelic graced the stage once again, performing all of their classic tracks and also putting out a CD recording of the show. Unfortunately, I wasn't well connected to the current events of the gaming world at that time, so I found out about all of this after the fact. And while it was cool that they had put out a new live CD, technically I already had all of those tracks, so I didn't rush out to buy it. I honestly don't remember whether I saw it on the Gameadelic fan page on Mixie, or if it came up in my Amazon recommends, but about a year ago, I saw an advertisement for yet another new Game Adelic CD called Reboot, and I figured that maybe they had just recorded another concert somewhere else. Then I looked at the description and saw that the whole album was completely new tracks, arrangements of songs from other Data East games that they didn't have the chance to perform back when they were new. Gameadelic had gone back into the studio to record new songs. This was too good to be true. This is the kind of thing that otaku fanboys like me sit around talking about. We say like, oh man guys, wouldn't it be cool if Gameadelic just got back together and like made arrangements for Midnight Resistance or Night Slashers or Heavy Barrel? Heavy Barrel? Night Slashers? Midnight Resistance? And then the rationality kicks in, and I start thinking about all the negatives. I say to myself, there's no way this is going to be as good as I'm expecting, 
Times have changed, the recording quality's gonna be different, they're older, the magic just won't be there. But either way, there was no way I wasn't gonna buy this. So when the CD arrived, I put it in to find out if this new Game of Delic album would stand alongside the legend they had left behind. the old recordings! The musicianship hasn't weakened at all! The sound quality is almost exactly the same. They still got the emphasis on the drums and guitar. This is the most extraordinary music CD I've heard in ages. This is the most amazing retro gaming related thing I've seen in years. And they finally did a ranged version of Night Slashers. I remember how disappointed I was when I bought the joint soundtrack for Night Slashes and Flower Busters, and they chose to make the arranged version to be one of the songs from Flower Busters. This album had been waiting to be brought into existence for 25 years. Even the songs whose original versions I don't really like all that much, like the Arcade Bloody Wolf and Edward Randy, kick ass. I'm not going to do a synopsis of every song, it would just take too long. But let me just say one thing about the arranged version of Heavy Barrel. When it comes on, I have to stop whatever I'm doing completely, because I know for the next five minutes, I'm gonna be jumping around my house playing air guitar like a mental patient. There's a keyboard and guitar solo battle, and that's all I'm gonna say. Well, all my dreams have been answered. I can technically die a happy man now. But, as it turns out, on my last game shopping trip to Osaka, I was looking around and discovered yet another Game Adelic album. Rebirth. This time it touted itself as a self-cover album. Apparently they went back into the studio and re-recorded a bunch of their old songs from the glory years. Now, that's not as exciting as an album with all new songs, true, but I figured it was still worth a listen, so I picked it up. Let's take a look at the track listing. As it turns out, the album starts out with one completely new arrangement, this time from Stadium Hero, which didn't make it into the reboot album. Also, there are a couple tracks that, to my knowledge, never had studio recordings with the actual band playing. Gallant Savage, for example, which was an arrangement of a song from Deathblade, had an arranged version done with synthesizers, and there was also a recording of it from one of their concerts, where they performed it on instruments, but I don't believe a band performed studio recording existed before this. Also, this album has a full-length arrangement of the Mizoguchi song from Fighter's History. The original arranged version from Fighter's History was a medley, and as far as I know, a standalone version had never existed before. So there are some new things to be heard here. There's also a new version of the vocal arrangement from Chinatown, this time done with, you guessed it, Vocaloid. Sign of the times, huh? This is a self-cover album, so I realize there's no point in complaining about the fact that it doesn't have all new original music, but there is one thing I want to mention. There isn't anything really wrong with the sound quality of the old Gameadelic recordings. Most of them are very clean and professional. They could stand alongside any rock music put out by a major record label. Maybe with the exception of Flying Power Disc and Fighter's History Dynamite. And, as it happens, both those songs happen to be on this new CD. Anyways, let's do some comparisons. too many surprises musically. The solos are all in the same places more or less as far as I can tell, and it seems like they've tried to imitate the originals. The new versions of Flying Power Disc and Fighter's History Dynamite do sound much better, and that's great since both those songs kick ass. It's a worthy purchase. Now, I can't finish doing this video without bringing up one little issue. I really don't want to complain because it's so great to have Game Adelic back together recording new music and I want them to keep doing it, but I do want to mention something a little odd about the new album. 
In the original lineup of Game Adelic, there was a person named Mr. K. Now, Mr. K would do the vocals in the songs, sometimes like rapping or a kind of chanting. Basically, he was in charge of the spoken parts in the music. Now, he had a very typical kind of radio announcer's voice. Uh, it worked well for what they were doing at the time. I think maybe he could even speak some English. I'm not sure whether he was present at the first reunion concert or not, but Mr. K is not a part of the new album. Now, the sound that they had created in the originals with this kind of rapping and chanting it has a very subtle effect. It's not something that you could easily imitate. And the modern imitations, or the attempts to imitate this sound, are a little peculiar. Take a listen to what I mean. What you wanna do and keep on breaking? Wanna do and keep on breaking? As you heard, on the Fighters History Dynamite track, they just completely threw in the towel and used voice samples from the game. I understand that no one can stop the passage of time and all that, but the modern versions just really sound like some old guys out of breath, barely able to keep up with the rhythm. I mean, for God's sakes, guys, if there's no one in your inner circle who can talk on beat, give me a call! These were literally the only parts of the CD that I found aesthetically unpleasing still doesn't change the fact that it was a worthy purchase. That's basically all for my review of these two CDs. They both scream, take my money. If you're a fan of classic games, old school game music, or just good old rock and roll, they're both worth a purchase. And Gameadelic? There's still tons more Data East music that would sound great with a band arrangement. I'm thinking almost anything from the Turbo Graphics version of Bloody Wolf, Stage 4, Stage 8 from Wolf Fang. Um, you got Stage 3 from Skull Fang. Oh yeah, Data East made Override. Level 4 would sound awesome. Yeah, and how about that song that plays when you get the Dragon Gun? Oh yeah, the last level from Heavy Barrel. You gotta do that. Then there's still Gunball. You haven't arranged anything from that yet. So many.